My wife and I right now are struggling with an unbelievable infestation of gypsy moth caterpillars. Actually, they're in the process right now of changing into the cocoon. And I'm gonna share with you something that you can do to save the trees from these crazy little critters when they are infesting your area. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And this is what they look like when they're in their caterpillar form. And it is unbelievable. There must be millions upon millions of them in the forest around my house. And they slowly work their way toward the back. In the front of the property is, which is really the west side of the property, is where they came from the National Forest, because across the street is National Forest. We have National Forest in the back. It came from the Western National Forest toward us, and now it's making its way across. And I've never seen anything like it. To me, it's like a biblical plague, you know, these kind of things you think about back thousands of years ago. And strangely enough, these guys aren't even indigenous to the United States. Some naturalist took these from Europe back in 1869 and, and thought he wanted to just bless America with this pest. And you know, I wish he wouldn't have, but he did. And now, now we got to deal with it. So the way it works is that these moths lay their eggs toward the you know middle to the end of the summer and those eggs will stay over until all the way through the winter and then this spring is when these caterpillars came out and about six seven weeks these caterpillars will just work havoc down into late june or july they'll begin to spin their cocoons and they're kind of a reddish brownish color they end up emerging from that in either obviously the male form or the female form. The male has kind of a darker, maybe brownish color and they are flyers and the females are whitish in color. And amazingly enough, you may not know this, they don't even fly. They just wait for someone to fly to them. And uh, I think some pheromones are sent off and that drives the men right to them and they come and they do their thing, they mate, and what ends up happening is then sometime after that, those females will lay a brood of eggs and they will be somewhere on, around the size of like a, a quarter, not, not the actual eggs themselves, but the, the group of eggs will be about the size of a quarter upwards up to about maybe three inches long. And once again, they just sit there. They'll sit there for the rest of the summer. If you see any of them, you can destroy them. You can just get rid of them. But when you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions, uh, there's only really so much you can do. And so they'll stay over the winter as eggs. And the next spring, we're probably going to have another infestation. And for roughly three years, you can end up having an infestation of these things. So this is what I have to look forward to. So I got to do a better job next year of stopping them from decimating really my fruit trees. That's what I care about the most. I mean, my oaks, what am I going to do? I mean, when you have, I mean, acres and acres of trees, it's going to be a little hard to stop them. But on the trees that you really care about, the, you know, fruit trees, there are things that you can do about it. These are kind of more in the eastern and northeastern part of the United States. You're probably not going to see them like this out west, at least uh, as far as I know, they haven't had the infestations like this. But we can have millions of them. You have them, especially in the north, places like Vermont. You'll have them maybe, uh, maybe all the way up to Maine and in Michigan. So you'll see them, New Hampshire probably. These areas are going to see these infestations, and it is unreal. So it turns out that their very favorite food seems to be the oak trees. And I happen to live in an oak forest, really with white oak and black oak mainly. Sure, I have some maples thrown in there and then I have sassafras and various other trees strewn about. But the main tree that they love are oak. And my oaks have been decimated toward the front of my property and they've made their way toward the back of my acreage. And honestly, I probably I'll have very few trees that end up having leaves if you don't do something about it. And I'll show you just a minute what you can do to save the trees that you want to save. But yes, oak is their favorite, but there's, like I said, about 300 other species that they will eat. I found that they absolutely love apple trees. My apple trees have been decimated 
and this is just i mean it's just incredible it kind of breaks your heart because it starts looking like fall in the summer and we only get so many months of of leaves on the trees it literally kind of breaks your heart one of the amazing things is if they've already taken out all the trees around them and there's just not much else to eat and there's this infestation going on they'll even attack the conifers they'll attack the pine trees and it's different see if, if they attack a healthy oak tree and totally defoliate it no leaves left whatsoever a healthy oak often can simply grow back they may even set out another set of leaves this year and they can make it next year and they can go a number of years with this but when you look at the the conifers the pine trees and so forth once they can actually be eaten by these caterpillars and if they defoliate one of the pine trees it's basically the end of that pine tree they don't have really the ability to put something else else out as easy as the deciduous trees do so let's see what you can do to save a tree it's pretty simple actually even right now you can see the caterpillars right now on this tree trunk this is an oak tree right here i just got hit in the face with something and it's probably uh something called frass now if you are and you get it in your hair and what is frass now frass is the feces from these caterpillars now i think it's the term for feces from any kind of insect i could be wrong about that one but it is at least for caterpillars back to this tree one of the simple you know most simple remedies for this if you're early enough you can use duct tape now obviously you can use duct tape for just about anything right it's said that it fixes any problem we showed uh an actual looking at the scientific literature on duct tape ver and warts versus standard cryotherapy i'll put a link to that at the end of this video uh, check it out you can see what actually works better according to scientific research duct tape or cryotherapy now you can probably guess but you'll have to watch that video but what you can simply do is see if if you you know i can knock some of these down as they're actually this is this one right here is just a, a shedding they actually i think they call it molting where they they end up kind of shedding their i don't know if you call it a exoskeleton i'm no you know bug scientist entomologist or whatever but basically they'll shed i think you know four five six times they'll shed their outer skin as they slowly make their way um you know toward the process of becoming a butterfly but i'm going to show you it's very very simple you you take some duct tape and you simply put it around the tree and you put it backwards so the sticky side out and you can reach right around and you know a couple times can always make it a little better making it a little fatter and you can come back in a few hours and you can actually see they will come up and they'll get right to this point and if they're not able to get under it or over it and the reason they can't get over it obviously the reason they can't get over it is because it's sticky and so they get stuck on it and so they just begin to bunch up all around it and if you get there early enough especially if it's on trees that you're really worried about and one of the great places to do this would actually be in an orchard i've had leaves die off on a, on a pear tree to two pear trees totally lost the leaves the leaves did come back but the next year those trees were dead so if a tree is strong has a good root system doesn't have any serious disease problem they should make it through next year but any trees that may be weak or suffering from disease or have root problems diseases and whatnot they can actually die as a result of this so now obviously when it comes to your fruit trees you paid good money to purchase those trees or somebody did at some point in history or went through all the labor to actually plant them and so doing this around the tree trunk if you can do it early enough you can stop them from actually getting up into your tree and you can potentially save them so if you're having this problem today something as simple as duct tape can help keep these things away keep from your forest your fruit trees being decimated now if it's a whole forest obviously what are you going to do you it be a ridiculous amount of money and effort to go around to you know hundreds or thousands of trees that's really not going to happen but for the trees maybe right around your house that you're really looking to save you know right here something as simple as duct tape can help you out
Now, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. God bless and have a fantastic day.